This is Ms. Parity, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the equation of a line in standard form. This here is the general form of an equation of line in standard form. We know that it's a line because its degree is 1, so both the x and the y only have exponents of 1. And to determine whether or not it's standard form, we notice that all of the terms are on the left side and a 0 is on the right side of the, equation, or of the equal sign. Another important thing to note is that the a value is always an integer, so it's never a fraction when we're in standard form. So all the terms on the left side, 0 on the right, and the coefficient of the x term is not a fraction. So when we have the equation in standard form, as we do right here, so we have x plus y minus 3 is equal to 0, so all of the terms are on the left side with a 0 on the right, Sometimes we need to put it into slope y-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b, in order to find the slope in the y-intercept. It isn't as easy to look at this equation and determine what the slope in the y-intercept are. So essentially when we're putting something into slope y-intercept form, we are isolating y. We want to have y all by itself on the left-hand side and all of the other terms on the right-hand side, so it looks like this. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract x from both the left side and the right side to clear it from the left side. So we have x minus x and 0 minus x here. This simplifies to y minus 3 is equal to negative x. And now in order to eliminate the negative 3, we need to add 3 to both the left side and the right side. We simplify and we're left with y is equal to negative x plus 3. So this is the slope y-intercept form of this exact same equation. So from here we can determine that our slope is negative 1 and our y-intercept is 3. So this would be much easier in terms of graphing. We can graph this very easy when we can determine that the y-intercept is 3 and the slope is negative 1. Whereas when we were looking at the standard form, this information isn't as clearly visible. So we'll try another example, x plus 2y minus 4 is equal to 0. So we're going to rearrange or isolate y so that it looks like slope y-intercept. So in this case, I did a couple of steps in one. We needed to subtract the x from the left side and add 4 to the left side. So I did the exact same thing on the right side, subtracted x and added 4. And now in order to isolate the y, we have to divide by 2. So we divide each term in the equation by 2, and we simplify. 2 over 2 becomes 1y, negative 1 over 2, x plus 2. So now that we're in slope y-intercept form, we can easily tell that the slope is negative 1 half and the y-intercept is 2. One more example. In this case, we have 6x minus 3y minus 15 is equal to 0. So we need to isolate the term with y in it first. So we're going to subtract 6x and add 15 to both the left side and the right side. And we're left with negative 3y, always taking the sign in front of the term, is equal to negative 6x plus 15. So now we need to divide both sides by negative 3. So we divide each of the terms in the expression or in the equation by negative 3 and we're left with y is equal to negative 6 over negative 3 is positive 2, and 15 over negative 3 is negative 5. So y is equal to 2x minus 5. Our slope is 2, and our y-intercept is negative 5, which we can take right from the equation. So one more application using equations of the line in standard form. The Celebrations Banquet Hall uses the equation 25n minus c plus 1250 equals 0 to determine the cost for a hall rental, where c represents the cost in dollars, which depends on n, the number of people attending. So part a says to identify the fixed and variable costs. Now we have the equation in standard form, so in order to determine the fixed and variable costs, we need to put the equation into slope y-intercept form. So as long as we can rearrange it, we can find the m and b value, which are the fixed and variable costs, very easily. So we start with the equation that was given to us, and we slowly rearrange to get it into slope y-intercept form. So in this case, we've subtracted 25n and 1250 from the left and the right-hand side. And then we divide 
each term by negative 1 to eliminate the coefficient of negative 1 with the C. And we're left with C is equal to 25N plus 1250. This gives us a variable cost of $25 a person and a fixed cost of $1250. There we go, and a fixed cost of $1250. So that means the initial cost to rent the hall would be $1,250, and then they're charging $25 for each person. So what is the rental cost if 100 people attend a soccer banquet? So what they're doing is they're asking us to find the cost, or C, given the number of people attending, or N, is equal to 100. So we'll use the equation that we just determined in part A, and we substitute in that N is equal to 100, and we get that the cost is $3,750. Therefore, the total cost would be $3,750 if 100 people attended a banquet.